For more on the treatment of COVID patients, let's bring in Dr. Richard Levitan. He's an emergency physician at Littleton Regional Hospital in New Hampshire. Dr. Levitan, thank you so much for joining us. You know more than anybody that the daily death tolls are climbing. You're on the front lines. You're about to sh start your shift at 9 o'clock. Paint the picture, if you will. Set the scene. What are you expecting today? Well, so I'm up in rural New England, about an hour south of Canada. And just, uh, you know, people in uh, major cities may not appreciate the fact that much of rural America did not see COVID for a long time. And in fact, the best areas of the country were Vermont and New Hampshire, uh, as well as Maine. Uh, over the summer, New Hampshire had eight cases in one day in August. This week, we've had daily case counts of over 1,200. Mm. So over the next few weeks in New Hampshire, we will see more cases, more hospitalizations, and more deaths likely than we've seen over the entire pandemic. What has happened? Why, why, the, why the big change in the number, do you think? Well, the, num the transmission is just accelerating. Uh, it, it is just accelerating tremendously. You know, when we spoke to you back in April, you recommended one of those oximeters for people to check their oxygen levels. As a matter of fact, after our conversation, I went out and got one myself. Now that we have a vaccine, does that change your, uh, change your advice? You know, it is wonderful that the vaccine is coming. I'm supposed to be vaccinated on Saturday. But between now and when the vaccine takes the wind out of this pandemic, we're looking at 15, maybe 20 million Americans getting infected with COVID. And the greatest uh, chance these patients who go on to develop pneumonia, only about one in 25 patients who you know, get COVID develop pneumonia and need hospitalization. But the best chance that patients who develop COVID pneumonia have is to come into the hospital early before their oxygen saturation falls. So I recommend that everybody who tests positive for COVID be monitoring their oxygen levels and be in touch with their doctor if they see that number fall uh, below 93%. But you know, the CDC website, I know you know this, doesn't specifically recommend these oximeters at home. And even some doctors who, when they heard that you were coming on, say they don't think this is a good idea. They believe it's more accurate to measure a patient's breath per minute to determine the oxygen levels. What is your response to that? Well, you know, the best hospitals in the country uh, are doing this. So, you know, Mayo Clinic are, are doing what? Uh, are, are doing are, what? Are doing, are doing pulse, pulse oximetry monitoring of COVID positive patients. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, these oximeters that you buy at the pharmacy are reliable uh, and you should be following them and trending them and be in touch with your doctor. But what I'm telling you is that the best hospitals in the country are doing this. Uh, the state of, the, of Vermont is only one of 50 states that's doing it. But of note, New York City in the last two weeks has now distributed hundreds of thousands of oximeters to hospitals so they can monitor every COVID positive patient in New York City. Uh, Britain, NHS England just distributed 200,000 oximeters. So we're seeing a growing movement of governmental agencies, and I hope this happens in the U.S. across states, mm -hmm. of monitoring COVID positive patients with oximeters because earlier detection of illness leads to earlier treatment and much better outcomes, as we saw with President Trump and Boris Johnson. Yeah, I do think what you're saying you know, makes sense. The earlier you treat it, the better, the earlier you're detected. But because the CDC doesn't recommend it, I think people should check with their doctors. I've heard you say that doctors are being set up to fail with COVID-19. What do you mean by that? Well, sadly for my ICU colleagues, when you get patients who have diffuse lung disease, what we call ARDS, where every area of lung is involved, where oxygen absorption is really already impaired, uh, where patients' lungs have become so stiff that they can't breathe, um, those are patients who wind up on ventilators. And, and this disease, unfortunately, when you get to this advanced lung injury, uh, we do very poorly with it. There mm -hmm. is still unacceptable high rates of death mm -hmm. among people who get uh, intubated and hospitalized. Now, it's important to note that we have reduced the death rate uh, to one quarter of what it was in New York City. You know, simple things we learned early on in the pandemic in New York have really changed practice. Mm -hmm. That using dexamethasone, All which right. is an inexpensive, widely available drug, uh, simple things, turning people onto their stomachs, using nasal oxygen instead of ventilators. We've made tremendous progress, but you do not want to get to the hospital with very low oxygen and yeah. severe lung injury. And right. so that's what I'm hoping your listeners hear.
All right, Dr. Richard Levitson, thank you very much.